You may be wondering to yourself, where did the time go? You probably remember your first day of work like it was yesterday. Your introduction to government acronyms was probably in your orientation class when you heard words like FEGLI, FIBA, SIRS, and FERS, and now you're listening to a pre-retirement seminar. You're likely here because you're in the planning stages of retirement, either getting ready to retire in a few short months or just starting to think about retirement down the road. As a public servant, you have dedicated your working life to help make this great country of ours a stronger one for the future. So, now it's time to start thinking and planning for your future. One of the first places you'll want to start is the OPM website. Here you'll find one of the most helpful resources for your planning, the Pre-Retirement Timeline tabs. Under the Retirement drop-down menu, click on the retirement system that applies to you. On the left-hand side of the next page, you'll see the Planning and Applying link. This will take you to the timelines from five years or less to within months of retirement. Each of these pages contains a checklist of actions you should be taking at that stage in your pre-retirement planning. You'll also want to use the Retirement Income Calculator tools to help you estimate your total income once you retire. Another great resource is the Frequently Asked Questions link also available under the Retirement tab on the OPM homepage. The FAQ pages have hundreds of common and not so common questions that may pertain to your specific situation. They're broken down into three categories, pre-retirement, post-retirement, and leaving the government. Many of the questions pertain to health benefits in retirement, and that will be our focus today. One of the most important benefits you've earned as a federal employee is the ability to take your health plan with you after you retire, without having to increase your portion of the total premium. In retirement, the government continues to pay over 70% of you and your survivor annuitant's monthly premium. Your share of the total premium will be deducted every month from your annuity. First, let's go over some retirement ground rules with the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program, known as FEHB or FEBA. In order to qualify for coverage after retirement, you must be continuously enrolled in any FEBA plan for five years before retirement, commonly known as the five-year rule. The rule does not require you to be enrolled in the same carrier during those five years. The five years can include time you are covered as a family member under another person's FEBA enrollment, or time covered under TRICARE or CHAMPAS as long as you are covered under a FEBA plan at the time of your retirement. The Federal Employee Dental and Vision Insurance Program, or FEDVIP, does not have the same five-year requirement. You can enroll in a FEDVIP dental or vision plan for the first time as a retiree, even if you were never enrolled as an employee, as long as you have an immediate annuity. Okay, let's get back to the ground rules. If you cancel your FEBA coverage after you retire, you will not be permitted to re-enroll at a later date. You do, however, have the option after you retire to suspend your FEBA coverage if you join a Medicare Advantage plan or TRICARE in place of your FEBA coverage. When you suspend your coverage, you may re-enroll during the FEBA annual open enrollment period, unless you involuntarily lose your Medicare Advantage plan or move out of the plan's service area. After you retire, you may find that your health plan doesn't suit your specific needs any longer or your family status may have changed. As a federal retiree, you have the same ability as an active employee to make changes to your health coverage. Instead of using Employee Express or your agency's designated payroll system, most retirees will use OPM's online services website for administering retirement benefits. OPM also offers a dedicated website during open season to make health plan changes for the upcoming year. Some agencies handle retiree benefits themselves, so you'll want to contact them directly. You can also make changes to your enrollment outside of open season for some qualifying life events. One event people are surprised to find out is not a qualifying life event is retirement. Retirement does not allow for plan changes outside of open season. Another thing some people are not usually clear on is whether family coverage is required at retirement. In fact, you are allowed to add a spouse or qualified dependents in retirement. Which takes us to 
Survivorship Benefits, another great benefit of federal retirement. Survivorship benefits allow for your survivor annuitant to continue FEBA coverage after your death. There are some important rules to follow here as well. You must be enrolled in a family plan at the time of your death, and at least one family member must be entitled to an annuity as a survivor. If you do not provide for a monthly benefit after your death, your survivor will not be able to continue coverage under the FEBA program. To make certain your survivor annuity information is accurate, you'll want to schedule a visit with your personnel representative who can review your official personnel folder, or OPF, with you. It's a good idea to review your OPF five years prior to and one year prior to retirement to make sure all your records are complete and accurate. You should verify all your service and make sure your insurance coverage is documented. You can also review your election opportunities to provide benefits after your death to your spouse, ex-spouse, or another person you designate as having an insurable interest in your continuing life. Now that we've discussed a few of the more important FEBA regulations in retirement, let's talk about Medicare and how it works with a FEBA program. Back in 1965, Medicare was signed into law and provided major medical coverage for those aged 65 and over. Several years later, people with certain diseases and disabilities under age 65 became eligible to enroll. Medicare began with two parts, Medicare Part A and B, now known as the original Medicare. As our health care system evolved over the years, two additional parts of Medicare were added. Part C was signed into law in 1997 for those who wanted to enroll in regional managed care plans. And Part D, for prescription drug coverage, was signed into law in 2003 and became effective in 2006. Those of you nearing age 65 may already have some experience with the original Medicare because of your parents. You likely already know that Part A is premium-free and Part B requires a monthly premium. The most popular question among federal employees nearing age 65 is, should I enroll in Part B or not? And the answer is a resounding, it depends, on several factors. Not the answer most people want to hear. You'd be in good company, though, if you did take Medicare Part B, because 93% of Americans who are eligible decide to enroll. Because premiums for Part B have steadily risen over the years, and since premiums are now based on income levels, the decision takes a little more thought and calculation for some federal retirees. For this reason, we'll focus more on Medicare Part B and speak more briefly on Parts A, C, and D a little later. Many people refer to Part B as the doctor portion of Medicare, but it's much more comprehensive than just coverage for outpatient and inpatient doctor visits. Part B covers services at 80% with an annual deductible. Along with doctor visits, Part B covers outpatient hospital care, outpatient diagnostic tests such as x-rays and laboratory tests, durable medical equipment and supplies, physical and occupational therapy, ambulance transportation, and other outpatient services. As of 2007, the monthly premium became means-tested and based on a person's adjusted gross income. The nonpartisan Kaiser Family Foundation recently determined that 95% of beneficiaries pay the standard monthly premium. Those with incomes over $85,000 fall into one of the four income-banded monthly premiums seen here. Because income brackets were held at 2010 levels until 2019, and as more baby boomers become eligible in the coming years, it's estimated that about 14% of beneficiaries will pay more than the standard premium. Many federal retirees want to know, why should I pay Part B premiums every month when my FEBA plan covers these same services? Well, there are some big advantages for those enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B. Almost all fee-for-service plans within the FEBA program will pay the 20% that Medicare doesn't pay. Those same plans will waive their deductibles and coinsurance for most medical services. They typically allow you to see any provider that accepts Medicare assignment anywhere across the country without referrals, even those providers outside the plan's network. Some plans even pay for medical services when outside the U.S., something Medicare doesn't cover. Also, most fee-for-service plans will coordinate with Medicare electronically, 
so you won't have to file paper claims after going to the doctor or hospital. For many people, all these factors add up to peace of mind and a greater sense of security in retirement. For others, it may just be a matter of dollars and cents. It really depends on you and your family's needs. If you decide not to enroll in Part B and you're enrolled in a fee-for-service plan within FEBA, you will likely have to pay your plan's deductible, co-pays, and co-insurance amounts up to the plan's yearly catastrophic limits. If acute care is needed in any given year, it may translate into several thousand dollars out of your pocket. You should compare these out-of-pocket costs to the amount you'll pay for Part B premiums for you and your spouse per year. You should also consider you and your spouse's health status in the years preceding age 65. An interesting NIH study shed some light on when our healthcare dollars are spent during our life cycle. The results show that on average, we spend more than half of our healthcare dollars in our golden years. And when longevity is on our side and we live to 85 years and beyond, two thirds of our expenditures will come after age 65. If you decide not to sign up for Medicare Part B when you're first eligible, you may be charged a late enrollment penalty. The penalty is 10% of the premium for the first year you do not enroll and is permanent. For every 12 months you are not enrolled in Part B, the premium penalty increases in 10% increments. There's one big exception to this rule, though. When you turn 65, the late enrollment penalty doesn't apply if you are enrolled as an active employee under FEBA or are covered under your spouse's group health plan and he or she is an active employee. In this case, it doesn't usually make financial sense to enroll in Medicare Part B just yet because your health plan is still considered the primary payer. Once you or your spouse stop working or are no longer covered by the group plan, you'll have an opportunity to enroll without a penalty during a special enrollment period. This eight-month time frame begins the month after you retire. You also have the option to enroll at any time while you are covered by the group health plan. In the Medicare section of all FEBA plan brochures, you'll find the primary payer chart. This detailed chart outlines when Medicare is primary or secondary according to your employment status and other factors determined by Medicare. And on the next page, you'll find complete details on how FEBA plans are required by law to pay providers when you are 65 and older and are not enrolled in Medicare Part A, Part B, or both. It also outlines how plans are required to pay physicians that do not accept Medicare assignment. The vast majority of doctors, though, do accept new Medicare patients. Another study that Kaiser Family Foundation conducted recently found that on average, 91% of physicians accept new Medicare patients nationally, with Florida leading the pack at 98%, and less than 1% of physicians in patient care have officially opted out of Medicare. Medicare Part A is commonly known as hospital insurance and is premium free. Part A covers inpatient hospital care, skilled nursing facility care, home health care, and hospice care. Almost all federal retirees receive Part A without having to pay a monthly premium. Part A hospital insurance has deductibles and daily copays that are based on a 60 day benefit period. Benefit periods aren't that typical in the private insurance world so an example may be helpful here. Let's say you were admitted to the hospital on January 1st and discharged on January 15th. Your Part A deductible would kick in and this would be the amount you owe the hospital if you had no other insurance. If you were readmitted to the hospital on March 20th, regardless of diagnosis, this would trigger another Part A deductible because more than 60 days have passed since your discharge if you stay in the hospital longer than 60 days in a benefit period, you have additional per day copays from day 61 to day 90, and an even higher per day copay from day 91 to 150, the last day of benefits. There would be no additional benefits available for this benefit period. It's worth noting that any day past day 90 is considered a lifetime reserve day, and you only have 60 lifetime reserve days available over your lifetime. In our 150-day example here, you would have used up your 60 lifetime reserve days. Almost all fee-for-service plans within the FEBA program 
pay Part A deductibles and co-pays on your behalf when Medicare is primary. One important thing to keep in mind is that FEBA plans have limitations on how much is covered for skilled nursing facilities after Medicare's payment. For this reason, you may want to look into long-term care insurance well before retirement. To find out more about long-term care insurance, visit the OPM website. Now, let's move on to Medicare Part C. Medicare Part C, or Medicare Advantage plans, are private health insurance companies approved by Medicare. To be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan, you must also be enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B. These regional HMO or PPO plans provide hospital and doctor coverage and usually provide prescription coverage. Their premiums and out-of-pocket costs vary widely throughout the country and may be more limited in certain areas. Some may require referrals to see specialists or limit your choice of providers within their network and may only pay for emergencies outside of their service area. If you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan and also have FEBA coverage, FEBA plans generally will not waive their plan deductibles or coinsurance. In this case, you may want to consider suspending your FEBA coverage. Medicare Part D, the latest addition to the Medicare program, is for prescription drug coverage and has a separate monthly premium. Like Part C, private health insurance companies provide benefits. OPM has determined that federal retirees who are enrolled in a FEBA plan do not need to enroll in a Medicare Part D plan. Prescription drug coverage within the FEBA program, on average, pays out as much as the standard Medicare prescription drug plan. If you decide to enroll in Medicare Part D later, you will not have to pay a penalty for late enrollment as long as you keep your FEBA plan. Signing up for Medicare is easy. The Social Security Administration is responsible for the Medicare enrollment process, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, is responsible for the administration of Medicare once you're signed up. If you already receive benefits from Social Security or the Railroad Retirement Board, you are automatically entitled to Medicare Part A and Part B starting the first day of the month you turn age 65. You will not need to do anything to enroll. Your Medicare card will be mailed to you about three months before your 65th birthday. If you're not yet receiving Social Security benefits, you'll have to sign up for Medicare Parts A and B. Your window of eligibility is seven months. It begins three months before the month you turn 65, includes your birthday month, and ends three months after the month you turn 65. If the window closes and you haven't applied, you'll have to wait until the general enrollment period from January 1st to March 31st to sign up. Coverage would then be effective on July 1st, and you may have to pay a penalty. Even if you don't plan on retiring before you turn 65, you should still apply. Remember, there is no premium for Part A, and you're entitled to it regardless of retirement status. Having Medicare Part A as a secondary payer will reduce your out-of-pocket costs should you be hospitalized, and it will help you keep more of that hard-earned money for retirement. The easiest way to sign up is online. Just go to ssa.gov forward slash Medicare to begin the process. It can take less than 10 minutes to complete depending on your situation. Reviewing the checklist of required information prior to starting will speed things up. You can even save your application as you go and come back at a later time. In most cases, once your application is submitted electronically, you're done. There are no forms to sign and usually no documentation is required. Social Security will process your application and contact you if they need more information. Otherwise, you'll receive your Medicare card in the mail. We've covered a lot of information about Medicare, and there are probably some special situations out there that we didn't have time to cover. Remember, your best and most accurate sources of information on all things Medicare are the Medicare.gov and SSA.gov websites. So far, we've reviewed some of the more important FEBA rules about retirement. We discussed Medicare A through D, with more emphasis on Part B, and talked about how Medicare coordinates with a FEBA program. One thing we haven't talked about yet is how GEHA's standard and high option health plans work with Medicare, or how GEHA's FedVIP dental plan can help you save money on dental expenses in retirement. Unfortunately, we don't have time right now.
But we do have time to show you where you can find short animated videos like the one you watch today. Just go to youtube.com forward slash GEHA health and you'll find videos on how GEHA's health plans work with Medicare, along with a video about GEHA's Connection Dental Federal, one of the original FedVIP dental plans. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, where you can discover great recipe books, healthy lifestyle advice, and updates on your federal health benefits. Your days of learning new government acronyms will be coming to an end soon and you'll be starting a new chapter in your life. We wish you happiness and good health in your retirement, and we thank you for your many years of public service. Have a great retirement.